Kia ora te whanau, Marki here with the much much talked of, uh, oft awaited first episode of the series Social Skills for Aspies and Askies. Okay, so, and you'll find out what all that means. So, this is an introduction. So, the, if you looked at the video before, that was a trailer. That was just to whet your appetites. This is an introduction to kind of set the context and uh, and explain some of the terminology as well. And then after this, we'll get stuck into the meat of the matter. And the first episode that I've got planned is uh, carries the working title of How Not to Be an Asshole. <laughs> I'm not sure whether that's a good title to use or not. I'll give me some feedback on that in the, in the comments. Because um, sometimes it's good to be direct. So, okay, why have I entitled this uh, social skills for Aspies and Askies. What is an Aski? <laughs> okay, so well, first of all, what is an Aspie? Um, if, you, if you're watching this, uh, the, the chances are you're very familiar with that term. Um, but, you know, I don't like to make assumptions. And this channel is all about demystifying. So we'll demystify Aspie. So uh, Aspie is a kind of, I like to think, an affectionate term uh, for people with high-functioning autism. Okay, uh, so high functioning autism used to be called Asperger's syndrome, and it still is by a lot of people. Uh, the medical books don't use that term anymore, but uh, sometimes I think you know, fuck the medical books. Um, <laughs> these diagnoses that they, that are included in these uh, what they call what they call diagnostic manuals change like the wind. Uh, it's a very kind of fickle business, and uh, some are in, and then, then the next edition, some are out. So I think people will, you know, the term Asperger's. That's kind of stuck, really. So people are going to be uh, going to be using that term probably for quite some time, uh, and I'm quite happy with it myself. I sometimes refer to myself as an Aspie for shorthand, but actually, I'm technically I'm not an Aspie. I am an ASCII. Okay. Now, if you're wondering why I haven't heard the term ASCII before, is because I've made it up, <laughs> but not from thin air. Okay. The, I've I've uh, I've taken this from the the term autistic for the first of all uh there's asd autistic spectrum disorder which is used a lot by clinicians and physicians uh i don't like it uh and the reason i don't like it is because it's got the d word in it okay disorder okay uh i don't think that asperger's is or high functioning autism whatever you want to call it is a disorder i think it has negative uh you know challenges and negative consequences but i think it's a difference um so if we call it if we if you change the d from disorder to difference that would be okay but another term that's used is asc autistic spectrum condition okay uh so that's where i've got the ascii from Okay, so why am I why am I complicating the issue? The reason I'm complicating the issue is because uh, what I'm talking about, uh, and I'm using this term in small letters, so high functioning autism. So people on the autistic spectrum who are this is and this is the audience really. This is this is who this series of videos is aimed at is people on the autistic spectrum who are, who are of higher than average intelligence. Okay, so obviously autism can strike people with, you know, the, uh, and go along with quite a severe learning disability. That's not the the audience that I'm I'm kind of um, aiming these videos at. So, and not everybody that's on this higher functioning level of autism is what would have been defined or would have the characteristics of Asperger's. Okay, and I'm one of the people that would fit into the category of above average intelligence, uh, autistic spectrum, but I don't meet the Asperger's criteria. I meet quite a few of them, uh, but certainly not all of them. And this is one of the reasons why I didn't identify uh, that I was on the autistic spectrum until actually quite recently. Okay, so I am sometimes known as a paddy, <laughs> and I haven't got any Irish blood in me. Uh, so uh, that's a term, uh, uh, an affectionate term, sometimes used for people with pathological uh, uh, demand avoidance syndrome, PDA, um, which also means public displays of affection, but don't confuse the two. Okay. So this is another autism condition, uh, which 
uh, has some overlap with uh, what would have been called Asperger's, but on other levels is quite different. Um, and uh, I'm not going to go too much into that because I've done another video on it and I'll, I'll put a, a link to that. So I did a video on that which was part of the Psych Song series, which is where I take a song that I think illustrates something uh, of a psychological nature. Um, and there was uh, there's a song, <clears throat> it's actually an Evanescence song, or a rather fantastic Evanescence song, um, called Imaginary, um, which to me defines the, the, the PDA uh, condition on the PDA experience. Okay, so uh, so ASCII is, is an inclusive term which I've made up, which includes people with PDA and people with what would have been called Asperger's syndrome. So I hope we cleared that one up and kind of cleared up that mystery. Okay, so um, and I wanted to say a little bit about myself and and just where I'm coming from in this. And I've talked about this in other videos, but to put put my kind of neurodiverse cards on the table, uh, I so I identify. Uh, on the autistic spectrum, probably kind of on the milder level, um, more with the pathological demand avoidance than with the uh, Aspergic tendencies. Uh, I also have ADHD, the inattentive type. So strictly speaking, that's you could say that's ADD, ADD. Um, uh, I have dyspraxia, uh, dyscalculia, um, and what's the other one? Dys uh, yeah, discalcul so dyscalculia is uh, difficulty with numbers, so that's like a, a numeric dyslexia. Okay. So that's where, where I'm coming from on this. Uh, so some of you will know, will have followed the channel before, I'm a psychotherapist and uh, I have a great interest in, in helping people with all these conditions, if I can use that word. Uh, I don't set myself up as somebody that kind of works or treats or advises people on these conditions but I work with people who present with other things with kind of stuff that we all present with you know depression anxiety and one or two specialists um, conditions uh, but I find a lot of my clients are also on the autistic spectrum and and uh, and I found you know that historically I've been able to um, perhaps uh, relate to them and, and help them more than somebody that's neurotypical so that's kind of where I'm coming from. So most of my most of my work, clinical uh, clinical is actually to do with sex in one form or another. I'm not a sex worker, um, but I work with uh, retroactive jealousy, which is a condition that relates to sex and love and relationships. Um, I work with people who've been sexually harmed, and I work with people who have sexually harmed other people. And uh, I've also got a history and still work with. Uh, doing more work actually with um, with people with gender dysphoria um, and there's a big overlap between people with gender dysphoria and people on the autistic spectrum so that's another reason why I have a, a strong interest in in this so that's where I'm kind of coming from okay uh, what else do I want to say um, so I want to talk about a few general things in this introduction before we get into the to the material um, so this is going to be a series about social skills for uh, for people who are ASCIIs and Aspies and um, one one observation that I, or two observations that I'll share is just as part of this general introduction one is that I think uh, the autistic spectrum condition is vastly underdiagnosed and I think there are a huge number of people that uh, have not been identified with this, but would um, benefit from an awareness of it, not, uh, not treatment, because there isn't really treatment, but would benefit from being aware and learning how to maximize the benefits and minimize the challenges and integrate more into society. Um, and one of the, my beefs about some of the uh, so so what happens is diagnosis is is quite a complex process that's done over several sessions with you know sometimes more than one clinician it takes in lots of you know factors you know history and symptomology and all that kind of thing but there are what they call screening questionnaires which are um, you know basically tick box exercises you know do you do this and it's usually what the, it's usually a Likert scale what they call a Likert scale so it's kind of uh, so for example they might say um, uh, I get very upset by if somebody ch makes a change in my routine okay and then it will be uh, partially agree um, uh, wholly agree partially agree uh, neither one nor the other um, uh, partially disagree strongly disagree and you, you tick this and go through all the, 
the things. I think they're all actually very bad, the ones that I've seen. And, um, and they don't take into account the clustering nature of, uh, of neurodiverse conditions. So, for example, I have autistic uh, traits, but I also have dyscalculia, as I mentioned earlier. So one of the questions on, the, on a lot of the autistic questionnaires is, uh, do you have an obsession with numbers or car number plates? Okay, now, of course I don't, because the numbers are my bête noire. I don't get on with numbers. So I think that's a, 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 big, uh, a big failing. Uh, so I think there's a vastly underdiagnosed um, population. Not that necessarily this thing should be pathologised, but I think the difference should be recognised, because once you know about it, you can improve your life, you can improve your efficiency, um, you can improve um, lots of things, really, your happiness. So, okay, so um, I was going to go into um, uh, a theory that, that, I, that, that I've developed about two different types of uh, uh, ASCII <laughs> or ASPI. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to include that in the first episode, so we won't put that in the introduction. So we'll keep this brief, and I will see you shortly to, uh, to talk about uh, how not to be an asshole. <laughs> and if you can think of a better title, let me know in the meantime. Rangi Mario.